Look at all this lovely wire. We're currently up to our necks in wire because we've, uh, we've got to the wiring stage of the boat and we are wrestling with the great god, electricity. The wiring. It's been an interesting process so far, hasn't it? Um, how, how long would you say it's actually taken? At least so far, because we're, you know, we're almost at the point where the wiring's done, so how, how long do you think it's been? Probably about six weeks or a couple of months of stuff that was research and um, spreadsheet making and length calculations. Yeah, um, it was an awful lot of that, wasn't it? Because, because yeah. like, we <laughs> <you> spent <laughs> less than a week actually wiring the boat up. Yeah, it's <laughs> it, it, you know the the actual practical side of it seems to have come together very very quickly, but there was uh, there was a lot of prep. What were the sources that you you were using actually? Because it was it was a bit tricky, kind of finding um, finding accurate information. That book, the twelve volt Bible, by Minor Brotherton and Ed Sherman. 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 Sherman as in the tank. I don't know why I'm saying Sherman so much, but I just I just like the sound of it. Sherman. Sherman. Yes. So so that was um, that that was useful, wasn't it? Um, to to a point, you will need to if you're doing this yourself, you'll need to create a spreadsheet with um, all your sort of different lengths of your wires because you need to calculate voltage drop. When it's 12 volts, if you don't use thick enough wire then you just lose a volt or two over the length of the wire. Yeah, which can be <laughs> which, not good. You know, when, when you've got a very long boat and you're talking about up to 30 meter runs of wire um, for your boat then it can be a massive issue so you have to use quite thick cable on the longest runs. I hope this is making sense. Um, I don't. I still don't understand really voltage drop. I just know that it happens, and you need to calculate for it. It's to do with resistance. Go yes, and go that... and go and look up ohms if you're confused about this, because it's all to do with stuff that I learned about in, fi in physics when I was twelve, and it didn't entirely make sense to me then, <laughs> and it's sort of making sense to me now. But it, it was kind of a bit of a challenge, actually, because I know you looked online for a lot of sort of um, information, but actually getting stuff that was accurate was a bit of a bit yeah, of a problem, the, wasn't like, it? Uh, like there are some some basic voltage drop tables in here, but they only go up to about like twelve or fifteen meters. Yeah, because because on a narrow boat you're dealing with a lot longer, particularly because yeah, you know. I mean, if I'll, you've got like an eighteen meter narrow boat um, and the wire run is actually double that, so you have to sort of um, calculate for that and back. That's the whole length of the wire run that you need to. Yeah, and, and, and there were places, that, I know you did a lot of like, like looking on, on forums and trying to find links and things, yeah, but... Yeah, sort of, you know, I've been having to look around sort of canal world forums and stuff like oh, that. The, but the, the dangerous sort of like part little, of the internet. Little links to sort of 10-year-old websites that canal boat wirers have put up at some point to just you know and then you can find like a little formula somewhere for them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, once you've got the formulas. Um... Yes you just you just need to get the formula right and you need to know what, you need to know what the specifics are that was the main. You, you need to have a clear head when you're putting it together. Yes. <laughs> now these here are the uh, British Standards Institution codes of conduct for installing 240 volt and 12 volt electrical systems on boats. Um, it was very important that we got these actually because um, we were having to do the electrical system ourselves. Uh, that was one thing we knew going into this. Uh, in an ideal world it would have been lovely to have been able to sort of get a man in to do it for us but that wasn't an option because of money so we needed to do these ourselves and we needed to know the specifics. We already knew that these actually existed but um, we soon found out that we needed to have the most up-to-date ones in order to make sure that um, because there have been like revisions um, and uh, and various like changes to the rules and these are the rules that you need to be able to actually part get your boat to pass the uh, British Safety Standards uh, inspection that it needs to be able to pass every five years. And they're not cheap. They're really not cheap. Because we, we looked around and we thought, oh, okay, uh, uh, um, can't be that expensive. Each one of these, 
The cheapest we saw them for was £120, and these are PDFs that are 22 pages. Uh, we found that out and we weren't very happy about it, but we did actually manage to, um, we didn't have to do that, we did actually manage to get it through a slightly complicated manoeuvre, simply because I used to be a student at Manchester University for the last, uh, well, last couple of years, from 2013 to 2015, I was doing an MA there. Now I'm an alumni member, but uh, I still have access to the library, and the library has online access to a whole bunch of uh, very nice uh, online features, including British Standards Online. So all we actually had to do was do a quick trip to Manchester, back to the university library, sneak in there, uh, with the help of a, a friend of mine who actually sort of helped me get full access to what I needed to get to, and we got copies, which was a big relief. And uh, yes, they've been very, very helpful and exceedingly useful. So this is one of the diagrams that you did um, when you were putting the lighting together, which again was just a process that just seemed to take forever <laughs> and be very, very involved. Um, can you yeah, talk us through I, it a little? I took my sort of my narrowboat layout diagram and I split it into different sort of sections of rooms and stuff. And then I started drawing in things like uh, the plugs, junctions, little USB sockets, switches. Got some LED strip there, LEDs. Oh. <laughs> Not helpful iPad. It's all right. <laughs> um, um, those are actually wall lights. Um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to have them on the ceiling or the wall at the time. <laughs> like loads of lighting in the, the office. Um, but yeah, this is. I did this for every room on the boat, um, and then just like wrote a little list of everything on there, just so that I could go back and refer to it um, when I was putting my spreadsheet together. Yes, and, and here we present the spreadsheet of doom. Ugh. Yeah, you, you, you just seem, you seem to spend about, I, I think possibly two solid weeks was just, it, I, it, it was... <laughs> I was lost yes, in another it, world. Uh, you know, if anyone's seen the movie A Beautiful Mind, it was, <laughs> it was a little bit like that. You were just like lost in this world of numbers that you just couldn't seem to escape from. So uh, just talk us through some of this wonder. Oh God, okay, well, fridge for example. Um, total amps, um, then you need to leave a, a sort of a 30% safety margin. So all your calculations need to be, so you're not sort of maxing out your wire. Then that's that's the total meters, which will need timesing by two um, for there and back. So, and then a bit of extra. And then I've got a voltage drop calculation. And then I sort of start getting into prices and cable thicknesses and things like that. This is my, this is this is this is the cable thickness I ended up with uh, at the end. And here we have some of the glorious wire that we've been dealing with. It's lovely, impressive stuff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, particularly, the, I just I just want to sort of take a, a, a moment to, to sort of really admire this stuff because uh, it's the, you know the, the, those are the real beasts, aren't they? Yeah, this is a, this is battery cable. This is 50 square mil. Yeah, to explain about square mil, because the fact that wire is measured in square millimetres kind of confused us at first, didn't it? Yeah, because like 50 mil, you think, oh God, is that going to be like a five centimetre wire? <laughs> um, but no, it's like, it's the square of, it's, it's, it's basically the area at the end, the sort of... Um, something <laughs> but it's much smaller than you think it's going to be this stuff is battery cable by law well according to the the BA, the uh, the boating safety standards you need to have at least 25 square mil um, battery cable this is 50 because i wanted to ensure that the wire could handle more amps um, than we would ever draw from the battery like if we had if we were using all of our electrics at the same time. Yeah, which um, we wouldn't be. <laughs> which we never would be. But it's nice to know that we could. Unless we were going through a tunnel using the shower. Uh, <laughs> and doing a wash <laughs> at the same having, time. Yeah, doing a wash and having a disco. <laughs> Although it does sound fun, now that you put it like that. <laughs> and, and so that stuff just goes from, from the battery to the kind to of... The, to the sort of the distribution panel. Yeah. 
yeah. um, whether where our fuse boxes and what have you. Yes, so, so, so thankfully we didn't actually need too much of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, because it's, it's blooming expensive is this stuff. Um, and that we've got about three meters of it, which, which should more than do the job. <laughs> so what else do we have here? Uh, that's, that's 16 mil. And these are the, uh, these are the ends that, uh, that you need to put on this stuff. It's so big that you can't, uh, these are the normal sort of, if you've got sort of anything between, well, these are for six mil cable. Yeah, I mean, to, 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 to explain, the, these are there to sort of protect the wire from moisture. Yeah, these, uh, these are basically adhesive heat shrink ends. So you strip your wire at the end and fit these on and then none of your wire is exposed and nothing is exposed up until the uh, the ring connection and that prevents your wire from corroding in the sort of the harsh marine environment um, of, of a canal yeah <laughs> you know well boats get a bit damp and moldy sometimes. oh yeah no, 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 no. It, it, it's just you Ours know it won't because we'll be living on it exactly <laughs> but, uh, exactly but uh but yes because you know it needs to be that way particularly on like boats that are actually going out to sea and that are dealing with a lot harsher environments than, than we're going to have to deal with this is some of the sort of more basic cable isn't it yes that's that's six mil cable so that's 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 pretty thick stuff most stuff you won't need any more than that that's four mil so you can compare the size oh, yeah. of these. They're like a little bit different. Yeah. Um, and then this stuff over here is 1.5, which is what you will need for most of your lights and stuff. Um, yeah, we've had to buy an awful lot of the 1.5, haven't we? Yeah, we've bought tons, hundreds of meters. It was a bit of a challenge actually working out how much it was going to be because the, the first... <laughs> The first pass of the budget was a bit scary. Yeah, when I first did it, it, it worked out at about a couple of grand. <laughs> um, but that was basically um, before I put my junctions in and sort of had sort of master cables going to junctions and then smaller cables going off the junctions. Yeah, that, that, that was also the point before we had completely confirmed how much voltage drop we could get away with as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it makes a big difference, the voltage drop. If you can get away with 10% voltage drop, it's a big difference compared to if you can only get away with um, 3 or 4% voltage drop. Yeah. So yeah, that, that really reduces the cable size you need. In cars and stuff, it, it's sort of, you're supposed to calculate it to be 3 or 4%, but uh, the boating safety standards, 10% is fine. I guess they sort of, they decided that based on, um, I guess, that it's just completely unaffordable to wire a boat if you, if you try and do it to three or four percent. Yeah, as, as we found and, out. Uh, um, some stuff you shouldn't take down to um, a, a full 10% voltage drop. Like, it's fine for lighting, but things like horns, if you've got a horn at the front of your boat, that, that needs to be, you know, four or five percent max because they start sounding funny <laughs> if there's too much voltage drop. So this, this is all the wiring in situ. This is everything that's been happening while I've been like largely away doing things. What we've got here, basically, what's this glorious thing that you've been attaching um, to the wall? It's a junction. These are positive and negative bus bars. And so that's a big thick cable coming from um, the batteries and then we're splitting off here for all the little lighting circuits in this area. So at this point we should probably actually briefly mention the exciting ducting that we had to actually put in. It's been in for a while but uh, this was all sort of, this is all like part of the plan isn't it? Yeah this is, this is something a lot of, well some narrowboat building companies do. Um, they create this sort of C-shaped ducting just under the gunnel where you can put all of your wires because if it's not in a wooden ducting it all needs to be in um, nylon ducting like this because this stuff decays when it touches spray foam insulation so for safety reasons it all lives in here out of the way how long would you say this is this is taken to get this all in position the wiring itself hasn't taken that long maybe yeah. like I think we've been doing it a couple of weeks and that's only sort of part-time 
not even four weeks, yeah. like three days a week at the moment. So um, it's really not taken long at all. It's um, it's complicated though. Complicated <laughs> enough. <laughs> Too complicated. Um, and as you see, everything needs labelling, or it can get really confusing. Yeah. So, I, I, did, is there like a system that you're using? What kind of uh, just like I mean, how how are you sort of sorting through it? Really, is it this? It's just a, it's a matter of looking up the wire thickness you need, and then running it where you need, and then making sure you label both ends of the wire. Yeah. There's a lot of wire. It gets it gets a bit confusing if you don't uh, don't label it at the time you put it in. <laughs> But you feel, um, how, how much longer do you think it's going to take to get everything in position? I reckon we'll have most of the wiring finished by the end of this afternoon. Um, there's like, there's, we still need to um, put a load of connections on down the other end uh, where the fuse, the fuse boxes are, which will be probably be another afternoon's work. Yeah. <laughs> But other than that, it, it's you, we're almost there. Yeah, I think I've spent more time actually waiting for stuff to turn up in the post than actually uh, doing the work. <laughs> right, and are you okay if I ask questions? Uh-huh. So, this is one of the diagrams that you did uh, for the lighting. Or... <laughs> so again, I was still wiping my okay. mouth. Well, no, 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 it's all right. <laughs> Look at all this wire. Beautiful wire, yes. We've got to the wiring stage of... Uh, of... <laughs> just getting into a wiring loop there, just saying wiring. I'll just, should I just do that? I, just, I, I could just like open the video going, wire, 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 beautiful wire. And, and that might scare people, really. <laughs>